Honestly, it's hard to describe Disney as anything less than an entertainment powerhouse. Anyone to have stepped a foot into the modern world will have seen at least one Disney favorite. Monsters Inc., Finding Nemo, Mickey Mouse, Frozen, the list is endless. And each film could spark an equally endless discussion. Adventures in Disneyland make for some of our most treasured childhood memories, if you've been lucky enough to visit one of them. Simply said, no rival filmmaker has ever been able to match the originality, ingenuity, and sheer excitement packaged in Disney's films. And, truly, running a company like that is no easy endeavor, let alone the future-proofing of it as an entertainment powerhouse. Except if your name happens to be Bob Iger, because as CEO who's only stepped down this year, he may have just achieved the unachievable. Duly, we couldn't do anything less than explore this achievement in the latter sections of this video. Now, before we dive into Bob Iger's ride with Disney, it's worth clarifying that Bob didn't build Disney from the ground up. Obviously, the main man to whom we can trace the origins of Disney is none other than Walt Disney himself. However, his era, the Roaring Sixties, is now long over. In fact, the 21st century presented Disney with a whole array of challenges that nearly derailed its long train of success. Having released a number of flopped box office films, Disney was struggling to stay ahead of the competition. Rivals like Pixar were quickly streaming ahead, locking horns with Disney in the process. This all changed, however, when Bob joined the leading carriage and took the helm as CEO. As a result, the Disney epic is simply incomplete without considering Bob's monumental contribution to the high-flying success it currently enjoys today. Because truly, Bob's list of accomplishments is unending. Under his leadership, which lasted from 2005 to 2020, Disney unveiled six of the top 10 films, 13 of the top 20, and more than half of the greatest box office hits in history. What's more, the oft-visited Disneyland theme parks have now sprung up in East Asia, with enormous parks in Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Japan. Reportedly, Bob made 40 trips to Shanghai in 18 years to propel Shanghai's Disneyland off the ground. It looks like the endless Trans-Pacific flights paid off though, since Shanghai's park attracted over 11 million visitors in its first year alone. Quite an achievement if you ask me. What's more, in the last 15 years, Disney's content creation empire has exploded beyond measure. Under Iger's tenure, Disney absorbed numerous competitors in the realm of film production. One of Iger's first moves after taking over as CEO was the acquisition of rival film producer Pixar Studios. In January 2006, Disney announced its purchase of Pixar for $7.4 billion, ending fierce competition rivalry with the producer of Toy Story and Finding Nemo. Three years later, in 2009, Disney acquired Marvel Entertainment, the maker of Iron Man and all accompanying Marvel heroes, for a price of $4 billion. Another three years later, Disney acquired Lucasfilm for the same price tag of $4 billion, adding the creator of Star Wars and Indiana Jones to its growing content library. However, its most formidable purchase came in 2018, after a long and protracted season of negotiations with the Murdoch family. The company that shifted hands from the latter to the former was none other than 21st Century Fox. With one signature and a daring decision by Iger, Disney bagged $71 billion worth of assets from Fox's entertainment wing. Since then, Disney holds the spot as one of the largest content-producing companies in the world. Nevertheless, in interviews, Iger often discusses the many challenges that accompanied these mega-deals. Amongst the biggest of them included the interpersonal challenge of wooing the owners of Fox and Lucasfilm to make the sale in the first place. Previously, Apple was partnered with Disney on multiple fronts, but the relationship fell apart during Eisner's leadership. With his touch of charm and gentleness, Bob managed to get Steve Jobs back on board and resume the once-fallen partnerships. In fact, Bob and Steve managed to forge an unbreakable bond of friendship. Bob even sat on Apple's board, only resigning over a conflict of interest that arose when Apple released a streaming service to rival that of Disney's. Nevertheless, 
The marriage between Apple and Disney is yet another example of how Disney harnessed quality partnerships under Iger's leadership. In an interview, Iger suggested that if Jobs had lived, then Apple and Disney may have even merged. I mean, doesn't that say it all? Then comes the next elephant in the room, the owner of media giant Fox, or better said, the man with the name of Rupert Murdoch. Purportedly, Murdoch was shocked when Disney purchased Lucasfilm, lamenting at his own failure to think of that. Though soon enough, Bob Iger entered the picture and pitched an acquisition of Fox's entertainment empire altogether. What followed was what Iger called Shakespearean drama between himself and the Murdoch family. While Rupert's son James was in favor of the deal, his younger son Lachlan was up in arms against the deal. Though Iger prefers not to go into so much detail into this Shakespearean drama, so all we know is that he succeeded, most importantly, and that he still has a nice relationship with Rupert, visiting his winery in Bel Air every now and then. That is to suggest, though, that Iger's strategy was to swallow up all competition, far from it, in fact, especially if he deemed it harmful to Disney's long-term interests. In his book, Iger recalls his last-minute exit from the deal to purchase Twitter, as he felt it was too risky a purchase for Disney. Despite being a Twitter user himself, Iger felt uneasy over the potential for troubles that came packaged with digital platforms like Twitter. As a result, Iger made a telephone call to Twitter's Jack Dorsey, telling him that he won't be making the purchase after all. So, owing to Iger's delicate navigating of the challenges, Disney seems to have remained largely afloat against changing trends in the global marketplace. As hinted previously, towards the tail end of 2019, Bob launched Disney+, Plus, its very own on-demand streaming service, and also its first direct-to-customer product. During the first quarter of 2020, Disney reported a gain of 26.5 million paid subscribers since its launch in the previous year. In a world where the content creation market is quickly being swallowed by tech giants like Netflix and Amazon Prime, this move puts Disney in a strong position to face the next generation of competitors. All in all, it seems as if Disney is doing rather well against its once ferocious competition. Relatively speaking, it entered the 2020s on a strong note, such that even Disney's investors couldn't agree more. Notably, when Bob announced his shock resignation, Disney's stock fell by over 2%. Interestingly, Bob Iger had repeatedly delayed his resignation as CEO, kicking the can down the road at least four times. The reason? Because a new challenge always cropped up that needed Bob's hands on the steering wheel. Now, however, and in his own words, Bob felt that the time seemed right, with everything falling into place. But even then, Bob isn't disappearing from the scene entirely. His replacement, Bob Chapek, will continue to consult Iger who now assumes the role of executive chairman until the end of 2021. As executive chairman, Bob plans to focus more on the strategic pillars of the company and provide a guiding hand to his successor in the coming years. And nicely done. Since the worsening challenges of doing business amidst a flood of competition, as well as the changing consumer landscape, may still need the wisdom that Bob Iger's accrued over the years. Speaking of which, the origins of Bob's wisdom become much clearer to the eye when you cast an eye at his rather humble beginnings. In his own words, he candidly asks, where else does a lower middle class kid with a modest education and not superhuman skills grow up to be me? There, he is alluding to how it was equally likely he'd have not gotten so far. Growing up in a military family that rarely had so much money, and with a father that suffered from manic depression, life wasn't so easy for young Bob Iger. That said, as the eldest sibling, he was often seen as the calming presence in an otherwise disorderly family life. His Wharton graduated father instilled a love of books in him, alongside a bunch of virtues that cemented his strong work ethic. As a student at Ithaca College, he spent every night making pizza at his local Pizza Hut branch in order to make some extra cash. Upon leaving college, he became a weatherman at ABC News, a career he once dreamed of having. 
Later, he joined the ABC studio that produced soap operas and game shows. Thereafter, he became part of Disney's surging popularity and slowly rose up the ranks until he became CEO. However, and even in his years at Disney, Bob was repeatedly underestimated by his colleagues. At times, he was openly humiliated and seen as nothing more than an errand boy. Turns out, however, that the errand boy had the fiercest work ethic of them all. Getting up at 4am every day and always arriving obsessively early for meetings, Bob housed a strong will under his gentle skin. Today, albeit a little shyly, even Iger himself admits that he may have surpassed anyone's wildest expectations of him. And interestingly, there is an air of humbleness and modesty to Bob Iger. In his book, he repeatedly talks about ego and how the lesser of it makes you a better leader. In his own words, he says, You have to have the ability to subjugate your own ego. It serves you well. This aura is bolstered by many of the testimonials from his colleagues on his character and general attitude. One of them, with the name of David Geffen, states that to be honorable, decent, smart, successful, and a terrific guy is unusual anywhere, but it is most unusual in the entertainment business. He's in a category of one. Evidently, starring a leadership that prizes niceness and humbleness, Iger commands a sparkling image of respectability and honor. On many occasions, Iger has been tipped as a potential occupant of the White House. In interviews and even meetings with Rupert Murdoch, he's often been asked as to whether he's interested in running for the presidency. In short, he hasn't ever ruled out the possibility, though he's not shown much enthusiasm for it either. Here, his humbleness may be at play again, but don't be surprised if you suddenly see his name on the ballot box, as the White House could easily do with a touch of Iger's Disney-smothered magic. Future president or not, Bob Iger leaves behind a glamorous and glittering entertainment empire, enough to bring joy to millions of people for generations to come. So, which is your favorite film under the Disney umbrella? For more interesting business stories past and present, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.